hi everyone welcome back to my youtube channel this is your girl dr nyere and today i will be talking about the case of the two boss killers okay this case this case is very very crazy and um, before i start i warn you all if you are easily triggered or you know because of the graphic nature of what i'm about to explain please feel free not to watch this video please I'm just wanting you as much as I want more views, I will still have to tell you. Now, without wasting time, let's dive right into this crazy case, okay? Now, it all began in 1977 when Loris Bittaker, 36 years old, and 29 years old, Roy Norris, met when both were inmates at the California men's colony in San, um, in San Luis. These two guys afterwards will be known as the two box killers. Okay. Both of them made a fatal agreement after discovering that they had similar sexual violent fantasies. So after discovering that what they did was they decided to wait until they are freed, which I wish they were never freed. But anyway, after being freed, they intended to rape, torture, and kill underage girls. One female from each teenage years, okay, or each teenage year, specifically 13 to 19 years, meaning each female from each teenage year or 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. Two years later, both of them joined forces outside to purchase Motor Mac, a 1977 GM cargo van that was um, silver in color. This scary pair, okay, I call them scary pair, picked up more than 20 female, 20 female checkers right between february and june 1979 not to assault them but rather to practice luring them into the van during this time they also looked for lonely places they found um like a secret fire path in the san gabriel mountains in april so b taker approached the gate to the fire road with a crowbar in hand asked me what he wanted to do with it he snapped the lock with it and changed it with his own all they now required was a victim unfortunately their first victim was a 16 year old lucinda lean um she actually left her you know beach church gathering on june 24 she couldn't have imagined the danger that awaited her. Around 7.40 or 7.45 uh, p.m., Bittaker and Norris finished building the bed in the back of their van. And then they drove to the beach, putting tools, clothing, and a, colorful, a, a cooler full of beer and soda below. <sighs> Another thing he said to Norris immediately he saw Lucinda was, oh, there's a pretty blonde, um, a pretty little blonde. And um, immediately they jumped into action. So B. Taker was the one that noticed Lucinda strolling down a side street, actually, right? That was why he said that. But they failed in their initial attempt to entice her in, to get into the van because they tried to offer her marijuana, beer, and the ride home, but it didn't work. So they proceeded to drive past, you know, to drive past her and pull up next to the driveway. I want you to imagine this. When Norris got out, unlocked the side door, and leaned into the van with his head and shoulders hidden from the view. As Lucinda passed by, she exchanged a few words with Norris before he, he pounced on her, dragged her into the van. Then, that moment, her, 
that moment just sealed her fate. That's all I have to say on that. So, as if that wasn't enough, Lucinda was powerless to protect herself because of her duct-taped mouth and shackled wrists and ankles. Despite her initial cry, she had little control over anything but making sure these beasts didn't enjoy seeing her in anguish. So, B. Tekka drove um, to their pre-arranged location, right, in the mountains while turning up the radio to maximum level. They didn't want anybody to hear what they were up to. So Norris and Lucinda remained in the van's back seat, right? When they got to the um, fire road, the two men took turns in raping Lucinda while one took a walk before Loris, Norris or whatever tried to physically strangle Lucinda. She just asked for a second to pray. Could you imagine? He was so shocked by her bulging eyes after 45 seconds of strangling her that he ran to the front um, bumper of the van and started vomiting. And you'll think he would stop there. Nope. Bitteka was unfazed. Her body slumped to the ground as his fingers were wrapped around her neck, her neck in a vice like hold. When the convulsions began, Bitteka wrapped a wire coat hanger tightly around Lucinda's throat using pliers and at both men would repeat again and again. In anticipation of wild animals covering their horrific um, deeds, which was what they thought, Norris and Bitteka ruled Lucinda's lifeless body in a plastic shower curtain before tossing her into a cane. Two weeks later, the murderous pair saw another victim. This time it was Andrea Hall or Andrea Joy Hall. She was um, 18 years old as of this as, as of the time of this murder. Hitchhiking along the Pacific Coast Highway. Andrea was forced into taking Polaroids, you know, pictures, right? After being raped and tormented. She begged for her life while her eyes revealed her utter terror. Neither man paid attention to her. Instead, they strangled her, punctured her skull with an ice pick, and dumped her lifeless body off a cliff. On September 3rd, Jackie, Doris, Gillam, and Jacqueline pay attention. One is Jackie, Doris, Gillam, and the other one is Jacqueline Lee Lamp. Okay, two friends. I waited a bus at Hammerser um, Beach. It worked quite effectively to entice the two girls in, inside a van with the weed. And uh, they offered weed and a free ride. So it was easy for them to entice them. Until the girls realized b wasn't going in the direction of the Pacific Coast Highway. Instead, he headed for the San Gabriel's you know, mountains while driving. Jacqueline... 13 years old at this time, pulled open the side door and Norris struck her over the head with a pre-filled bag of lead weight, briefly rendering, rendering her unconscious. Then he tried to tie her up and gag 15, um, tie the other um, Jackie up and gag the 15-year-old Jackie, like I said, but she regained her composure and made another attempt to flee. She was sadly no match for Norris, who yanked her arm behind her back and dragged her back into the van. B. Taker put the gear shift in park, hopped inside and sucker punched Jacqueline in the face as Norris bound and gagged the two females as B. Taker observed the struggle was taking place in fr in full front of witnesses so he drove away jackie and jacqueline we are finally in the san gabriel um, mountains held captives for nearly two whole days repeatedly raped and made to pose for pornographic polaroids the first time b taker has sexual has sexually assaulted little jackie he taped, he tape recorded the whole incident and instructed Jackie to feel free to express her pain. Could you all imagine? 
as if that wasn't enough Norris testified at trial that he buried the tape at a nearby um, cemetery but it was never you know it has never been found till today so the girls were subjected to unspeakable acts of torture such as having ice picks used to pierce their breasts oh man with pliers norris also removed one of jackie's nipples even death won't come right away before b taker strangled um jackie to death he drilled an ice pick into each of her ears strangled her for fun beat her once again and finally strangled her to death both remains were dumped into a california chapel by the two box killers over a cliff now their next victim shirley lynette lefford i'm not going to go in details because this one oh lord this one was horrible she was age 16 she made a very very deadly error on halloween night 1979 when she accepted the offer to uh, she accepted the offer of a ride from these two crazy guys now one may ask why did she easily enter the van well some people claimed that shelly layford accepted the ride because she recognized bitaker from the restaurant where she had previously worked as a part-time waitress um it seems that um b taker frequented the place after shelly had entered the van b taker drove to a quiet side street and norris pulled a knife then using barricade tape he bound and gagged shelly the nightmare just started for her man in the meantime b taker tortured shelly telling her to scream loud louder while norris took b taker's seat and drove randomly for more than an hour what he kept asking shelly what's the matter don't you like to scream even on the tape shelly pleaded with b taker saying no don't touch me to which b taker now replied her scream as loud as you wish before hitting her with a sledgehammer and punching her breast to beat them back into her chest b taker tormented shelly with pliers while raping and sexually abusing her doing god only knows what to her at trial norris later recalled hearing cries continuous screams coming from the back of the van the horror she went through was beyond anyone's imagination shirley who was still inside the van shouted in horror as she saw norris pick up the sledgehammer after breaking the bone in her left elbow with a blow norris continued to strike her shelly begged him not to hit her again norris responded by striking the same broken elbow for an additional 25 times he finally stopped staring at shelly who, who was trembling crying and afraid he asked her why are you shivering Norris finally killed Shirley by strangling her with a coat hanger again and tightening the wire with pliers after two hours of terrible torment. In order to you know, gauge the public's reaction, you can't believe what they did. B. Taker chose to pose her body on a random sunland lawn. Norris accepted. So while Norris displayed Shirley's dismembered um, remains, on an ivy patch in the shadows, B. Taker served as a watchman. He tore open the girl's legs, not wanting to blow his um, final opportunity to humiliate her. Hmm. A jogger in Sunland, California discovered her naked body 48 hours after. And her dismembered cops was lying in an ivy patch her legs spread apart the bones of jackie nor um doris um gallum gillam or gallum and jacqueline Leland we are finally discovered in the san gabriel mountains andrea hall and lucender bodies have not been found this way i'll end this story this is just the part one you know i just focused on the victims 
<sighs> so the next part I'm going to um, focus on the arrest and the trial and aftermath of the whole case and um, till my next video please try to subscribe and also don't forget cherish the life that you have be grateful for the life that you have and make the best out of it i'll see you all in my next video remain blessed